Chairman Bob, thanks for coming to do the business of the city of Kenan. We hope that you find it pleasing within your side. Be with all those making decisions today and give them a uh, uh, clear mind and an open heart to uh, um, listen to those that, things that are said and uh, be able to apply them for the best thing for the city. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Charlie Maddox needing to leave town. Uh, we put out feelers for a Ward 3 representative. Uh, and uh, I've spoken uh, with uh, Gary French uh, earlier and then spoke to them again before I left. Uh, and uh, wanted to uh, appoint Gary French to the uh, uh, open position of Ward 3. And so I make that in the form of a motion. Is that right? You appoint somebody right. on the council makes okay. that motion. All right. I would like to appoint uh, Gary French to the Ward 3 position. Motion. Second. Okay. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. With that, I'd like to see. I've got a question, sir. Yes. How come the other other two applicants wasn't yeah, I started to say, do we have any more uh, the applicants that wanted the position? We had uh, Mr. Harris did uh, send in a request. Uh -huh. um, I was not able to be here at the last city council meeting. Uh -huh. uh, I was attending a training, um, but I talked with uh, Mr. Bill and also with Brenda and a couple others on the council saying that it's uh, uh, Gary had uh, approached me early on uh -huh. and we had talked and I thought he would be a very good position for it. And, uh, was he the only two? No. There was three, Jake, Crafton, Glenn Harris and Gary okay. Rich. And uh, so uh, I didn't put uh, Gary on the last city council meeting because I was not able to be here. I was attending a training in Colorado. And uh, uh, if I was, then this would have been taken care of two weeks ago. Uh, and uh, uh, and that was one of the, one of my talk with uh, Mr. Palmer about, about it. Um, that it would be brought up at this one. I even told Gary that I wouldn't be able to be at this one, or at the last one, and so we would bring it up at this meeting here. Uh, Mayor, I respect that your appointment, but just asking, so maybe the question can answer, is there any criteria that you use to, to pick from the three to decide when you get several others? I mean, it's your, I guess it's your choice because you make the appointment to us. Well, the appointment was one interest, uh, Gary came through very early on and uh, spoke to me, and then I spoke to him, uh, talked to him back uh, until Monday. All I knew was I had uh, Mr. French and Mr. Kraft, and until yesterday afternoon, I was not aware of anybody else that was in that position. And I'd already, uh, uh, before I left uh, back at the, uh, uh, what was it, well, over two weeks ago. I'd well, already talked with Mr. French about appointing him to this Before, two, two weeks ago, I think Jake Crespin had sent his request in yeah. long before you made that decision. So you had to use some kind of a criteria. You didn't prioritize it on, on the time frame that they sent in their applications. You just... I, uh, That's what John is asking, what kind of criteria you used. Did you prioritize them in the order received? On, on what criteria? On criteria of someone that I think would do a good job. Okay. On someone that I think would have the best interests of the city of Kennet at their heart and uh, would be open minded to okay. any and all discussions. And that's all we need to know. Yeah. Okay. That's what I need to know. I think. Okay. So when did, you, when did you receive my application? Uh, yesterday afternoon. whenever I called you this afternoon to, uh, because it's for all those on the council they already had the uh, agenda for today and uh, and Mr. French was already put on the agenda uh, last week 
Uh, be putting on the agenda anyway. That, that, how does that get him to get to be appointed? That's what I'd like to know. Is that I had already made my decision and spoken with uh, Mr. French, and so I didn't want to, you know, call him up and say, hey, you know, I've got somebody else that's put in. Uh, so it's, I still I knew that, uh, um, you know, if we would have known, you know, three weeks ago that you were interested, then, you know, could have sat down and talked with you to figure out uh, which direction. But by then, uh, I'd already spoken with Mr. French and said, and, you know, this is, uh, you know, I, you know I if you let somebody, know. if you let the community know that the state come of vacant when the gentleman had to leave, you might have had more applicants, and I would have got mine in quicker. Okay. Well, it's, uh, we knew at the first meeting of last month, okay. and uh, and uh, it was mentioned at that meeting then that if anybody was interested, I believe the newspaper and the radio both carried it. And then at the second meeting of last month, they both carried it again. Um, and, uh, uh, and so that way by the... Uh, Last by the first meeting of this month, uh, whenever I was going to be gone, I'd already left a message with Mr. Palmer and Ms. Brenda. Was that you that called me this afternoon? Yes. Okay. Did you ever talk to Jack Crafton? Because he expressed interest long before three weeks ago. He wanted to fill in the spot on Ward 3 when the other seat became available or vacant. That, uh, did I speak with him first? Yeah. No. Okay. I, I don't. I don't think it's right. He should have spoke with every party before it was ever done. Really, to see how the, we thought, how we felt, or what we. And and you called me this afternoon. I I, I thought it was somebody else, but you called me this afternoon, and more or less just told me that it was already set in granite. That it was going to be that way, and wasn't no need for me to show up tonight. Well, I just, yeah, I, I expressed to you that I'd already uh, made my decision, right. and uh, I didn't tell you when I got because you know, I, I got the. Uh, but the council had to vote. You, yes. You, you should have not told him not to come to the meeting. Because, I didn't tell him not to come okay. to the meeting. Well, I, he he probably didn't tell me, but I, I in the conversation it was that away. I mean, honestly. But yeah, I did call him and inform him that I uh, made According to Terry, you appoint, but the council has to approve. You yes. can't just say, I'm appointing this person and it's a done deal. We have to vote.
Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, committee and department reports. Uh, anyone from the chamber? Nope. Nope. Finance. All right. We got our numbers in for last month, and uh, all of them are slightly up. No, not by very much, but uh, year to date we're up. Two hundred nine thousand nine nineteen twelve. Okay. And if you want it broken down, you can look in your email that you got to and broken down. All right. Pretty flat to slightly up for a big month. So we got Christmas season right around the corner, and seeing that we're a sales tax based city, that um, will hopefully be good. We're on. We had Christmas last year too, so you have to compare it to last yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So fire. Thank you. Mayor, council members, uh, events have kind of been going on within our fire department the past uh, few weeks. Uh, this past week, past two weeks, fire prevention week has been occurring. And, uh, we've managed to reach out to over 900 children in uh, limited settings. So we've been with, uh, taking appropriate steps as far as social distancing. We've done our best uh, in order to get the information out there about uh, fire safety. Also, starting the first week of October, uh, again, training is always one of our uh, key things that we do. And with that being said, uh, we did start our EMT program, emergency medical technician program. We do have 15 individuals enrolled. And that course is going to be going on through uh, the first week in December. So we were, we were very excited that we had that many enrolled. And uh, look forward to them being part of our EMS program. Uh, other events going on this past weekend, uh, we did have our annual driver's training that occurred, a requirement for all of our full-time staff and part-time staff uh, wanting to uh, drive the apparatus. So we managed to get that done, and that helps, uh, again, with our MARMA uh, requirements. So we've done that this past weekend. Also, over the course of the past two weeks, uh, for some of you that have inquired to me about this, uh, Officer One. Uh, we did have uh, a few officers that needed to get their Officer 1 certification, <coughs> and we have wrapped that course up this past week. So testing by the state, uh, state fire testing is still kind of a hit and miss. Uh, we're trying to get, a, right now we've got about 25 to 30 individuals needing testing in some form or fashion, and the state's just not willing to let loose to, to come down here to our area to do that yet. So, but uh, we did get them through their fire officer warning and as well as their instructor certification. So we're, we're thrilled with that. This coming week, uh, Thursday to be honest with you, October 21st to 1021, uh, the state is participating in the Great Central United States Shakeout. And that's a time where we ask all citizens and businesses to participate in what would you do during an earthquake. Uh, we'll be getting with Trina, uh, DDD News, and getting that information out there as well as Steve Patton with the uh, radio station. But it's just asking folks at uh, 1021, think about what you would do during an earthquake. Do you have enough emergency supplies and so forth? <coughs> so again, uh, we'll be getting some more news out there tomorrow. Get it out there get the news media with it. And I ask that everyone... Uh, other things that we have going on, uh, we've increased our part-time involvement in the, in the fire service with our part-time members. Uh, we had looked at some of our busier times uh, with Saturday, Sunday being uh, afternoons and evening being one of our busier times as far as fire response. So we've taken now and we've, uh, we've invited the part-time personnel to sign up if they so wish and uh, help staff a station. What we're doing, we're trying to staff two persons per station, in other words, one driver and one additional staff members. What we're trying to do is we eventually want to lessen our footprint on particularly the medical calls. Uh, right now, because of the uncertainties as far as part-time personnel showing up uh, or the uncertainties of the calls, we have been running multiple people, but now we're starting to lessen that. So. Um, we are running more multiple calls at this time, running three to four calls back to back. So the additional fire, the fire trucks will still be out. 
Uh, they'll still be, still be responding to that bull as well as any other type of incident. But again, with uh, stacking these uh, <coughs> stations with two personnel, we should lessen our footprint. In other words, we should only have one apparatus, uh, whether it be an engine or a squad unit, respond. So, wanted to kind of mention that. Fire Station 2 project uh, spoke with Dill and Pollard Architects today. They will be meeting with their consultants tomorrow and finalizing all their construction documents. So, uh, hopefully, within the next council meeting, we'll be presenting for uh, opening construction bids to push those out. Giving you an update on that. If at all possible, I would like a short time with a closed session uh, for the fire department activities uh, at the end of our, our meeting tonight. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Human resources. Um, <clears throat> I've had some requests from, from some of the employees to uh, change the, uh, they all get an incentive check. And it usually comes in December, but there's three payrolls in December, and we were looking into could we make that incentive check available in November rather than December. It would kind of save some of the hassle about the three payroll checks, three payroll months. That's fine to do. Yes. So we need to do we need to put that in form of a motion? Yes. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion then that we go ahead and move the incentive check up to November rather than December. Second. Okay. And would that be for the last pay period in November or Thanksgiving weekend, I think, is between paydays. It's between the paydays. Is that so you want to do it before Thanksgiving? Or Thanksgiving week. I think Leslie said she could get them out Wednesday. Okay. That they went and this this is a budget it it is in the budget. Okay. It's just we're all we're doing is moving the date. Yeah, just moving okay. the date, that's all. Nothing else. So the Wednesday before Thanksgiving then? Yes. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Anything that's, else? That's all I have. Okay. You may. We have been extremely busy taking up a lot of dogs. We've returned two dogs to Cena that no one knows how they got to Kenneth, two different people, and one to a, a lady from Marmaduke that was picked up. So, yes. And no way to find out like, how they got here. But we did get them back to the owner, luckily. But we are really full. We had a girl that has been um, probably six, seven years, a young girl, she's now in college, that collects every ball for us. And she collected this year 1,040 pounds of dog food, over 40 blankets, some dog beds, and a lot of cleaning supplies, and some money for bedding. So we would like to say thank you. Like to everybody in the community that supported her collecting for us. Um, we also, our washer was going out and the bear board did collect money for us during the bear, so we used some of that to purchase a new washer from Wilcoxon and Mr. Daryl Wilcoxon. Um, he gave us a really good deal and cut it way back, so we want to say thank you to him and his um, business. Uh, we also had our Department of Ag inspection for this year, and we had no hits. We got a 100%. It's only my third time doing that in 14 well, years. Congrats. So yeah. we were really excited about that because we wasn't kind of a little iffy. We had so many dogs, which the day that they were there, they did tell us we only had room for one more and don't pick up. So, but we managed to get them all gone before we had to pick up anything else. And we do have a. Um, one of our bands, the older one, is still out and in the shop. They were having electrical problems since the computer thing went. So it's is that been the out. new one? No, it's the older one, and it's been out for a while now. But we still have managed to pick up roughly about 55 dogs at all times at the pound. So as fast as we ship them out, we get them right back in again, a different type of them. Hmm. But we're 
staying busy, and I just want to tell everybody thanks for the support. Thank you. Wait, I got a question. Yes, sir. A couple of meetings ago, there was uh, the tranquilizer guns. Mm -hmm. Are we going to try and sell those or move those, um, change those? We had a meeting with the committee, the main committee, and they told me to talk to the local vets to see if they would have any use for them or be able to use them, like even maybe to assist us if we did need them. Um, so far, I haven't heard back yet. So. Uh, but uh, if they did, months, we would, yes. Well, I mean, it, it's been a little bit, but I don't know if they're going to you know, want to use them or if they can legally like, sedate things like that. Like, I'm not sure. Okay. But I did, and I tried to, like, I talked to a couple of like, area um, people over the animal control, and no one wants them because of, I guess, the liability, and you can't get the medication. So, but basically. Paperweights. Yes. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Please. Um, Mayor, I think Chief Wilson talked to Scott Hunter today. Uh, we're going to need a closed session for some personnel issues. And the only other thing I have is in your mayor's report, okay. positive news for the canine program. I'll read it. And they're hiring. In the hiring? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Still hiring. Still hiring. All right. Street Park. A uh, couple of things here. Uh, looks like the road base for the Dr. Peanut Road is about 50% finished, and we're hoping it's to be ready for use by Friday. And uh, we'll get that base in, and they can use that. And then uh, when we're ready to finish the road, we'll have to do some repairs upon the base to make sure that it's uh, appropriately able to handle the, the travel. But uh, uh, so that's that's good news. That's what we've been striving to get done. Uh, the Mo crew is having trouble with their 1994 Ford ambulance, and I'm going to tell you all right now that at some point. Uh, we're going to be looking to replace that, and uh, we'll be working on getting that into the budget and see, figuring out how we can do that. Uh, they've had a change in design that created difficulty with parts, and it's got 174,000 miles on it, and uh, <coughs> we're just having a tough time getting the mo crew outfitted the way we need to go. Just to let you all know that. Anything else? That's the other one in closed meeting. Yes. A little bit like to go along with that closing yeah. tonight. Okay. Uh, go on with stormwater. Go ahead and go on with the storm. Um, we are looking to figure out how, and this is something the finance committee is going to have to help me out with. We want to try to get a separate line item uh, to set aside. Um, some of the issues that we've uh, for equipment reserve and for uh, uh, we've got the vac truck payment and the emergency stormwater reserve we're putting away 750 7500 a month in that and we want to see if we can get a separate line item so we can keep more careful track of, of those uh, uh, the amount of money we've do we got need to do that before the next fiscal year fiscal year or? Um, <coughs> it it would probably be a benefit for us if we could because yeah from what i understand from leslie it's basically all the money's in the same account it would just be there was there was a, an issue with we had one of our meetings and and one of the council thought that we had a certain amount of money in there that could be spent and in actuality it couldn't be because it's part of it set up set aside for the back truck payment and then part of it is the emergency fund so that's that is not it's in the equipment reserve but it can't be spent so they're wanting the, another line item with the stormwater reserve for that money to be in there so that we'll have a better accounting of the equipment reserve that can be spent for equipment or whatever and that money won't be in, in included in that you have to amend the 
our big thing is for street and stormwater is we're trying to get ourselves in a situation where an emergency comes up, say Floyd Street, like we've had in the past, different things like that. Instead of having to scramble to get things prepared for that, we've got the money set aside to handle any situation like that. For the taxpayers, we just feel like that's in their taxpayer's best interest to try to be sure we know we've got that money. All right, so by the next city council, can street, storm, and finance get together and set that line item up? And then uh, we're going to amend the uh, budget at the next meeting. Um, tell them about the brush cutters. <clears throat> Mayor, council members, uh, I don't know, some of you might have noticed we've been working on cutting buffalo ditch, and then all of a sudden we weren't cutting buffalo ditch. Our brush cutter is in the shop, and I called them yesterday. They said it's on the list to be fixed, but he does not know when. I guess like everybody else in the country, they don't have enough people to work and they're looking for help right now and they've got a lot on the, a uh, lot going on. He said that it's on the list and they take it as it, as the list goes. So he, he was going to check and see if he had any idea how long it will be, but, but we don't know really what we're looking at. Uh, that being said, I would like to try to look at maybe getting a second one out of stormwater at some point. We're going to kind of look at the budget for that and just put it out there that this is the mower that goes on the excavator and it basically mows uh, buffalo ditch and snot slough. It does a good job getting up and down those. They do make one that will go on the back of a tractor on three point hitch. Right now, I think I've told y'all we've got one City Light and Water gave us that goes on the back of the tractor that basically goes up and down and it mows the small ditches in town. It does a pretty good job of getting those, but it is, uh, <laughs> we had a cylinder leaking on it and took it to uh, the cylinder shop and that guy looked at it and kind of surprised and said, why, I ain't seen one of them since the 60s. So <laughs> that's about how old it is. He said he didn't know if he'd get parts or not. He was able to rebuild the cylinder. But uh, we're, we shear pins in it on two or three, four or five a day, it's just wore out. And it's, it's not, it doesn't last very long. We, we spend about as much time working on it as we do using it. You have an estimate of what uh, we're we're looking. We uh, so. there are all different prices and all different kinds, and we're actually gonna see if we can get a little bit different one instead of one that just goes up and down the side of the ditch. We'd like to get one more like the excavator that will go up and cut fence rows also, so we can take care of that a little bit better too. So we're, you remember we're looking at prices. Do what? You remember how much we paid for that one? Uh, the excavate, well, we, that was about $6,000, but this will be more because uh, we got the excavator and then we bought this unit around five or 6000 I think, but we're talking about a whole self-contained unit okay. to go on the back of the tractor, which will be the hydraulic tank and, and the whole nine yards. It'll hook to the three-point hitch and then plug into the hydraulics on the tractor. So I'm uh, looking, I think I talked to a guy that said he could get one for around 16000 but we've also talked to a guy that said 30000 so I'm going to say anywhere between you there. you get a second one for the excavator and just swap them when one breaks? Uh, we probably could do that, but the thing about that is the excavator has to be uh, hauled to a lot of the places that we need to take it, and it's time-consuming, and if we had one for the back of the tractor, it would be a lot quicker as far as getting around and we'd get a lot more done. If with the excavator on the big ditch and the tractor with this other one on the small ditches, we could get a lot more done. And as far as fence rows, we could get, it just be a lot quicker with it, with this on the tractor. And, it's and, then, you let us know. and then, uh, you know, another thing we're looking at is downtime. I, you know, I don't, I, I'd like to not be down during mowing season, if, if at all possible. Like right now, we're, we'll get back to it, but I don't know when. And I, if we had another one, we could carry on with it and, and not have that downtime. But we'll get the prices to get back with you. And that's all we've got. Thank you. One little thing. Uh, we have, the city of Kenton has received our five-year uh, permit, stormwater permit. Uh, myself, Keith, and the stormwater engineer uh, are going to be working on uh, our plan. 
we've got to have a five-year plan to be able to keep our permit for five years. So, and so we're going to be working on that, and it's got to be done by January, I believe, and then the annual report. So all of it kind of is coming due at the same time. So we're going to be busy on the stormwater paperwork part of this for the state. So that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> and Dust Trail, and then uh, Senior Citizen. Yes, we had a meeting uh, last Thursday. We was given a report <clears throat> by Ms. Laura Ford and some of the interesting facts. They have about clientele of about 780 people. They've done about, uh, I think it was 2,100 or 21,000 meals. 21,000. 21,000. Okay. Thank Sorry, you. I didn't mean that. No, I, I just now recognize. Thank you. And so, when you look at it, I mean, that's a tremendous amount of things that they're doing for the senior citizens out there. Um, one of the things that we did talk about, and Leslie was there at the meeting, she took notes and stuff, is that um, they're wanting us to, and she agreed it would be easy or better for us that we pay the senior citizen center or the quarterly disbursement, do it at the first of each quarter rather than like at the tail end, which helps them to be able, the things they've asked for, be able to pay for them and, and uh, get that done. And with that, we need to pay the first quarter, which is July, uh, August, September, and then if we can pay them for the second quarter, which would be a total of $62,500. The money is in the account, and this is half of what they've requested for funding. So this would be two quarters. Uh, if I could get that in the form of a motion to be able to pay that. Terry, is that okay to repay in advance? Yes, you can fund it any way you want. I was just making sure. Yeah. Make a motion. Okay, we have a motion. Second. To and a second, the motion is to pay the senior citizen uh, sales tax allotment at the beginning of each quarter. Yes, right? and so, go ahead and pay that first quarter too. Yeah, we'll go ahead and well, we've got that in our new business. Who's second? Uh, uh, Mr. Bob. Yeah, Mr. Bob. Who made the motion? Then? John. John did. Gotcha. Second. So we have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. Uh, one other thing. Just a couple other things. They have an additional request, and this uh, wasn't in their proposal when they um, made their request for the, the uh, tax. And it is they need to replace a commercial dishwasher. It, the one they got is obsolete. They've had some problems, and it's cost them quite a bit to repair. I think it's a little almost 800 bucks. And the gentleman that repaired it said that basically he can't get parts for it anymore. So they've got a cost <coughs> for a commercial uh, dishwasher, it's $10,257.38. So, you know, we have the money in there, it's just they're in, they're in dire need of it right now. He was able to get the one going for right yeah, now. It's working now. For now. For the money, now. well, now, I, yeah. those things were included in that. This was something they did not prepare for. Correct. Yeah, this this wasn't in the original proposal. We we discussed uh, also uh, working toward budgeting replacement of items and things like that. Uh, you know, after requesting them a little bit. It's kind of one of those things that was working. Didn't think it needed to be replaced. And, that's cost them twice already. It's just one out. A 
like a motion with that and we do this motion. I'll make a second. The floor is available. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, so uh, we have to allocate 10,250 <coughs> on top of the 62? Yes. How are we sitting with that account? I don't have those numbers in front of me right now. I'll have to go with Leslie and I can tell you how much is in that account. Do you have that down from the last week? Yeah, somewhere. Is that the only estimate? Yes, that's the reason I said up to that amount because I'm going to ask her to get a couple of pots. Yeah. And the thing of it is, it's kind of like in Kennett, she calls several people, they either come out of Cape or wherever, and they don't come, or they don't give you no price. It's, it's becoming a problem, I guess, where people are not getting on the road. And, Do you know the brand of the dishwasher they're looking at? Uh, it was through Brasco. I can get it to you. Yeah, there's 337000 $575. She, she sent me the Yeah, that's what's in the senior series. I can get it big enough for my Bible. It's a CMA dish machine. Are you familiar with that? I am. Good machine. It's a good machine. That includes installation. I don't, know. I don't know what size it is. If it's, right. uh, the one we looked at, I think it had like a five year warranty on it. I'll look into that and see. If you give me the model number, I'll look into it. So we should we would be better to modify that motion to up to a certain amount. But that's what he did. Yeah, but yeah, that's the amount that's on this bid, so she finds one a little more reasonable. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Just one other thing real quick. Just to let you know, uh, it's in their budget request when they submitted it, but what will be coming up, their 2010 Ford Transit van, uh, it, they'll be looking at replacing it. It's given them some mechanical problems and has high mileage. And what I recommended for them to do was look at state big vehicles. He looked at one uh, that was reasonable. So that'll be probably coming up down the road. And good news, she did have in the report that she thought the air conditioning heating units over in the other building were going to have to be replaced. They're, no, they're good. They're good. The gentleman that come in to work on them said all that one of them needed was a fan motor, so that's a good news that we don't, she doesn't have to spend on that. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we don't have anything under unfinished business. Uh, under new business, uh, discuss uh, radio uh, and bids received. Have we received those? Yeah. Bids on the radios, uh, we did receive a couple of different uh, bids from the different folks. Uh, there was a little bit of discrepancy, though, on the requirements uh, of the radio system. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more. Uh, Nitronics, uh, out of Bid, Missouri, uh, they submitted a bid for $143.41. And then Smith Two Way Radio Incorporated out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, they had initially submitted a bid for about 175 
and that come down after we discussed our needs, and it was 167, 199.30. Now again, Detronix, uh, while it was a lower bid, it did not include any specifications as far as what we needed in the radio system for fire and police. So that 167, 199 will be the better option for us. Again, that included everything that was needed versus just a a, a base model. The 167 from who? 167, 199, 30 from Smith to Way Rio out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. Terry, that was not a budgeted item, so how do we handle that? You know what? Yeah, they come with that stage and approved. Okay. Because of the size of the Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to take care of this one. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, next, you have the approval of the ordinance for accepting the requalification. And you all should have the ordinance. Mm -hmm. And this is. Just to approve we've, something that we've been working on for the last year and a half mm -hmm. at least is the recodification of our ordinances. We, we did it last in 1994, uh, so it's been a pretty massive undertaking to recodify everything, which is updating all ordinances and also to make uh, our, our uh, city ordinances. Uh, fall in line with state law when it, when it needs to be. And, and it's all now in, in one book, which is also related to online. An ordinance adopting and enacting the new code of ordinances of the city of Kennett, the county of Duncan, state of Missouri, establishing the same, providing for the repeal of certain ordinances not included therein, except as herein expressly provided, providing for the manner of amending such code of ordinances providing penalty for the violation thereof and providing when this ordinance shall become effective. Any motion? Motion. Second? Second. Any motion to second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second reading. It's an ordinance adopting and enacting a new code of ordinances of the city of Kennett County of Dumplin, State of Missouri, establishing the same. Provided for the repeal of certain ordinances not included therein, except as herein expressly provided, providing for the manner of amending such code of ordin ordinances, providing penalty for the vi violation thereof, providing when this ordinance shall become effective. Motion. Second. Okay, Mrs. Rocco? Yes. 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 It's approved. And we need to add one other thing to uh, new business. Uh, it, it's, it's an ordinance approving the lease purchase of uh, two fire trucks. It's uh, it's been approved. Yes. By the council. This is just the ordinance approving the lease purchase agreement, and it's uh, uh, for 2021 Pierce Saber Pumper, 2006 Pierce Aerial Truck. Uh, Total price is six hundred eighty-eight thousand three hundred twenty dollars. Lease purchase for ten years, two point five five percent with First State Community Bank. The payments at sixty-five sixteen sixty-three a month, commencing November twenty-eighth of twenty-one. And first reading is an ordinance approving a tax-exempt equipment lease purchase agreement. With First State Community Bank. Motion. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second reading ordinance approving a tax exempt equipment lease purchase agreement with First State Community Bank. Motion. Second. Then motion and a second. Any okay. question? Take roll call? Yes. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Um, also under new business uh, for the committees with Mr. Charlie uh, stepping out uh, that uh, 
and I believe it was police, fire, human resources, and humane. That uh, is where or the positions he was in, and so with Mr. French coming on board, uh, just letting him step into those positions. Wasn't he in the Senior Citizens Committee as well? That's correct. And then the yeah. senior. So, so, uh, yeah, so just all committees that uh, Mr. Maddox was in, and uh, Mr. French can go in those positions. <coughs> so, need a motion? Yes. Motion. Any second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There we go. Okay, mayor's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Palmer, for filling in. Um, I was at the last meeting. I was in Colorado at an active release technique seminar, uh, and uh, then uh, Southwest decided to extend my stay a few days. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, got to at least got to see something instead of you know looking through a glass window uh, out of Pikes Peak uh, uh, for uh, five days. Um, but with that, uh, the Kennett Police Department and K9 Rocky is getting a donation of body armor. And the, uh, this gift is for, uh, protection. This gift of protection is provided by Vested Interest in Canines Inc. And this is a uh, quite a substantial vest for Rocky. The cost is anywhere from almost eighteen hundred to twenty three hundred, depending on the size of the dog and all. And so uh, <clears throat> uh, comes with a five year warranty. Uh, but uh, this is being donated to our canine, our police department. So uh, um, that'll be here uh, within the next you know, eight to ten weeks. So that'll be good for our police officers and uh, mm -hmm. with as much work as uh, Rocky does. Uh, along with that, um, for all those asking questions, when is Halloween? Halloween is October 31st. Uh, and uh, we're going to leave it on October 31st. I believe there is actually a city ordinance that says that uh, uh, Halloween is to remain on Halloween. Uh, but for those looking for a trunk or treat, uh, you don't have to look far. Uh, I know there's several churches out there, uh, Ely Baptist, North per uh, no, First Baptist, and there's probably several others that are having trunk or treats. So that uh, nice, easy, uh, get your kids in and out and uh, going through. Uh, that it's uh, one other thing that if you are an individual looking for uh, for a job, the city has a few jobs that are open. Uh, the uh, police department with the dispatchers, street department, uh, has several that are open. So uh, any of those that are looking and would like, uh, they can come up here to City Hall and uh, check in with Miss Brenda here and uh, pick up an application, fill it out, and turn it in. There's uh, uh, several positions uh, that are open. And... Uh, and then uh, with that, uh, we're going to need a uh, closed session for the discuss of real estate. Motion. And uh, real estate and personnel. Yeah, real estate and personnel. <coughs> uh, and so, uh, yeah. And then, uh, so that's all I have. Uh, besides that, we have a public comment. Three, two, one. So we'll go ahead and set the motion to close and to go into closed session. Motion. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. There we go. All right. Five minutes.